Welcome everyone to this space. This is a new talk that just started last week um, that I'm calling the TLP Talks, Truth, Liberation, Peace. So I felt inspired to want to gather in conversation and to have our various inputs. I'm also just sort of excited that tonight happens to be that we're all uh, a people of color community that is also going to be in conversation. And I feel very grateful to have this space with you all. Something I was writing about is Satya, you know, radicals, radical truth telling. Um, and it's interesting that you bring up peace because we, one cannot mistake peace for silence. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that happens a lot in, in the yoga community that people mistake silence for peace. One can be very silent and be really not peaceful. Uh, you know, and people can be silenced to maintain oppression, which is what happens a lot in the systems that we are a part of. Um, so really to know that peace comes from actually speaking your truth. How can I be of service to this moment? Because I do think that uh, it requires all of us to do our own role in in this. To, so what is my role? And to know what my role is, one has to be, I think for myself, I can speak that um, I need I need some time to process and figure this out uh, rather than add to the noise because there is so much going on in, uh, on social media as, as it should be. Um, but also, I don't need to say everything all the time. I can just listen. It's just something I've always thought of. Yeah, is that always is that always true? You know, silence equals death. Um, and of course, as somebody who does meditate and has an, an insight practice, sometimes silence is powerful. And like mm -hmm. you're saying, Anjali, taking a moment to not have to add to the noise, but taking a moment of silence in that way too. So it's so much about context, and that's what I think I've thought of more than anything in recent. Um, situations is to understand what's going on it's like there needs to be context and without that it gets very confusing you know? but you know we have a spiritual perspective to this right and as you were saying i mean it's context and we can look at it from from an absolute point of view when you talk about silence i think that silence beneficial uh for gaining insights, you know, that, that, that there's a difference of what you're talking about there. And I think in the relative context, I think it's actually inviting people to see themselves as whole and self-accept themselves and kind of stand up for themselves. So it's this, it's this double-edged sword, right? I think I all, my perspective is that spirituality is here for our human evolution, right? That eventually we can work towards dissolving binary and move towards more of a um, freer freedom, freedom equaling peace way of living that's more aligned with the absolute truth that we're all familiar with. And we're using it from the lens of absolute value and saying, okay, we're not going to take sides. We're going to weigh this, you know, what biases have I gotten? And I think that's the wisdom we bring by being on the path and taking more of this neutral observer standpoint and, and then moving for head. But I also feel that it's our roles because we're never going to, we're always going to feel silenced in those rooms where there's a majority of oppression. I think a lot of us with color in some ways have been conditioned. Yeah. It brings to mind, and I'll let, I see Andrea, you're gonna jump in. I just have to say this out loud though. Sometimes I wonder, is it important to take sides in certain moments if someone has not been able to speak and then we need to use our privilege and our voice, you know? So that's just something that comes to mind. I, I definitely feel like my worth is like person to person. Like I don't see myself as somebody who wants to be on a platform, like trying to face oppression in that way. I think that's sort of what you were talking about, Gotham, is like, you know, 
being in those rooms that are filled, right? Like I, I don't necessarily feel the strength powerfully as a woman of color to, to stand up and bear my chest. Like that's just not where I am in my evolution on the, on the spiritual uh, <laughs> journey that we're on. Um, but, you know, as far as, as I move through the world and I have opportunities to speak with people with the, you know, two Israeli families on my street, you know, helping them to see that I care about you. I care about your children. I want them to be safe, you know? And though we are not having like a real conversation about like the bigger, bigger picture, I'm not there to have an argument with them because I know that um, like, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people all over, they're suffering right now. Like they're, all they can see is their suffering? Is their fear? Is my family okay? Is my um are my children going to be okay at school in America? Because this is coming to me. Like this is, this is affecting me. You know, and that's you know one of my neighbors. The he was just struck by the fact that this thing that's happening all the way over there in his homeland is having such an impact on his family living on. Dolores Street in San Francisco and I was like we're all connected and it's sort of like I could see the shock in his you know he he doesn't think that way there is a very much like this is them and this is us type of mentality that he has and even that moment that I shared with this person who clearly we are not on the same we're not on the same sides at the end of the day it wasn't about making him understand you know why I was right and he was wrong or vice versa. It was about helping him to understand in this path, in this world, we are all connected. And if that's all I could say to him, to give him a glimpse of like, huh, then I feel like that's my work, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're all at different places on the, the spectrum of consciousness, right? And so this is where they are today. And if they, if I could just acknowledge that, and understand it and and perhaps share and help to nudge them in one way or the other. That's not really my role. I don't know if that's my role, you know, like I can model my behavior, my heart, who I care about, what I care about. But beyond that, I'm starting to think that this is why these binaries keep showing up for us is because we think that we're going to change each other and we never are. It's impossible. <laughs> it's impossible. All we can change is ourselves. Yeah, and in 12 step, um, you you're talking about how uh, modeling you can you can only model what a healthy person and peaceful person looks like. And um, in 12 step, they say attraction, not promotion. Mm-hmm. So um, I agree with you, Andrea. Like, really, um, one of the strongest ways we can. Um, spread peace is by modeling it mm-hmm. and um, using attraction, not promotion that way. So I think for a lasting peace, I agree with your concept that if we model peace and health within ourselves to others, that's going to make a, lo- a longer lasting, a stronger mm-hmm. peace. So that's the two things I would say is that um, for the people who want world peace, it's accessible and to let them know how. Mm-hmm. And then to be more informal and have a longer lasting peace, um, modeling it. And that works with, um, we have mirror neurons in our brains. So the quickest way to transfer, one of the quickest way to transfer information between humans is through mirror neurons. So if you model what you want to see, um, it's going to spread faster than if you sit there and give like a long three hour speech <laughs> where people forget half of what you said. This is, this is sort of where I, I struggle though. And I think maybe we have a, a greater potential for that kind of access. But then I think, is this, and maybe that's just how this works. It depends again on context, but there are sometimes in certain spaces and places in the world where this kind of message, um, I don't know if it's very timely or it's the right 
uh, if it's possible. You know? I think the ancient texts were written in a different world. Uh, they were composed bearing a whole different way of experiencing the world. Um, though the basic questions for human human life is the same thing. We all want to live a life of less suffering. Uh, we all want to, you know, be happy, whatever that is. So that that's that that is the whole goal. But one cannot one cannot just apply those te uh, those um. Uh, messages or those concepts or those practices without taking into account the systems that have come into place through history, be it uh, capitalism, colonialism, uh, you know, homophobia, like all of that. White uh, supremacy. White supremacy, yeah, colonialism, right? Uh, you know, all of that, because those are the things that people did not grapple with. They had their own stuff, like casteism mm -hmm. was a big part of the history there. But people, if you were to look at history, you will see that people were always pushing back against power uh, and hierarchy. We are now, uh, you know, I think we are now witnessing some things which we, our nervous systems are really not equipped to witness. Like if I look at Instagram now, I'm like devastated at the things that I'm seeing. I don't know how to really regulate. I don't think I have the capacity to see this and then go about my day without like thinking like, oh yeah, it's just like a normal day. And yet here it's a normal day in California, right? So it's this whole dissonance that we are sitting with, like what is this I'm seeing and what is it that, my, that I'm living? My realities are so like freaking far apart from each other. And I'm really struggling with figuring out how to like, be true to what is and what I'm seeing. And both are true for whoever is living it. Um, yes, peace is the ultimate goal, but uh, but to go there, we have to, we have to really get into the mess. We have to really, we have to really look at the mess that we have done as a humanity uh, with for each other and with each other. We are, we are listening to each other, looking at each other in the eye and, breathing together, I think those are really important things. And I think we have a definite role as people who are in the uh, yoga space or healing space or quote unquote spiritual place. I think we have a definite role to play in, in the world today, uh, but we have to make it very real. You know, we can get lost. People like us can get lost in the esoteric stuff. Uh, this, 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 abstract ideal of peace right what does that really mean in our everyday life and what does that really mean in the face of such rampant dehumanization of people and violence like harm body harm so when we have to name it i think big things begin to be true when we start naming it i think the reason that truth is necessary to have peace is in buddhism um, there's five things to consider before speaking. And the first thing is, is it true? Then the next thing is, is it helpful? And the next thing is, is it kind? Mm. And then the next thing is, is it endearing so that the person can hear it? And then I don't know why they put this last because it really should be first is, is it timely? So, so it's again back to perspective, and I think what Steve said and what you said. I mean, I think there's there's a part of like appreciating differences, and even though if people don't understand, but it's back to how consciousness works, that there is a energy that that truth, um, you know. And she would always say, "Sacha del se bolo," which means speak from a clean and pure heart. And there is a vibrancy when you, you're stepping in higher consciousness or earnesty or doing it from that pure place of, you know, uh, being rooted in your uh, values that creates transformation or dissolves all differences. It has a power 
to kind of create those shifts. And that's where the magic happens. Just, I really feel it too. I definitely feel like we are um, working towards, you know, something really big. And a lot of systems have to break. As people who have brought up, have been brought up with a level of oppression, a level of like, sometimes wanting to shrink because we just would rather not be seen type of thing. Um, down even our own internalized ways of being of judgment and who does who do they think they are and why do they get to do this and they don't get to do, you know what I mean like all of that still exists even with us even with ourselves just thank you all so much for taking some time and sending some some good energy out there through this conversation as I always say I think the answers are in the conversation and I hope that we can continue this um again all right thank Truth you liberation peace Thank you Bye. all so much. Bye.